you were often required to solve an equation that contains a radical expression. The following steps can be used to solve equations containing radical expressions. First, isolate the radical expression and put it on the left side of the equation. Next, raise both sides of the equation to the power of the index on the radical. This gets rid of the radical sign. Now you can use algebra to isolate the variable and solve for it. Lastly, check by substituting your solution back into the original equation and see if it works. This is important because as you move ahead in math, you'll encounter equations for which some solutions don't work and therefore must be discarded. Let's do an example. We're asked to solve the equation the square root of 3x plus 4 plus 35 is equal to 40. The first step is to isolate the radical by subtracting 35 from both sides. Subtracting 35 from both sides of the equation gives us this. The square root of 3x plus 4 equals 5. We have a square root radical isolated, so the next step is to raise both sides of the equation to the power of 2, or square both sides. Squaring both sides gives us this. So next we need to work out squares on both sides. Now we work out the square on both sides. Squaring the square root of 3x plus 4 gives us 3x plus 4, and squaring 5 gives us 25. The next step in isolating the variable is subtracting 4 from both sides. Subtracting 4 from both sides gives us 3x equals 21. Next, we divide both sides by 3 to isolate x. 3x divided by 3 is x, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we get x equals 7. So the final answer is x equals 7. The next step is to substitute 7 in for the variable x in the original equation and see if it works. To check our answer, we start with the original equation. Next, we substitute our answer 7 in for the variable x. We put 7 in for x. Next, we'll work inside the radical and multiply 3 times 7. 3 times 7 equals 21. Next, we'll add the 21 plus 4 under the radical. 21 plus 4 equals 25. Now that we have this, the next thing we can do is take the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So next, we just add 5 plus 35 on the left side. 5 plus 35 equals 40. We end up with 40 equals 40. So 7 is the correct solution when we solve this for x. We'll do one more example. This one involves a cube root radical. We're asked to solve the equation 3 times the cube root of a minus 14 equals 18. The first thing we need to do is isolate the radical by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. After dividing both sides by 3, we have the cube root radical isolated. So next we cube both sides of the equation. Cubing both sides of the equation gives us this. Next we work out both of these cubes. Cubing the cube root of a minus 14 gives us a minus 14, and 6 cubed is 216. So we're left with a minus 14 is 216. The next thing we can do is isolate a by adding 14 to both sides. Adding 14 to both sides gives us a equals 216 plus 14. So next we just add up 216 plus 14. 216 plus 14 is equal to 230. So we're left with a equals 230. The final answer is the variable a equals 230. What we need to do now is substitute the value 230 back in for a in the original equation and see if it works. Here's the original equation we were asked to solve. The answer we got is 230, so we'll substitute 230 into the equation for a. Now that we substituted 230 in for a, we'll work out the value inside the radical. It is 230 minus 14. 230 minus 14 is equal to 216. So we have 216 inside the cube root radical. At this point, we'll just take the cube root of 216. 
We recognize 216 as a perfect cube. The cube root of 216 is just 6. In the last step, we'll multiply 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is equal to 18. So we have 18 on the left. So we're left with 18 equals 18, which is correct. Therefore, 230 is the correct value for A when this equation is solved. Here are the steps again. Pause the video and read these over. Following them will help you solve a variety of equations which contain radicals. Thank you.